Traditional historians will say that the French Revolution started simply because of lack of food and economic problems. And while that's true, the evidence suggests the trouble was instigated and engineered by illuminated Freemasons. It was their first attempt to overthrow a monarchy, abolish Christianity and establish a utopian science republic in a nation state. In 1784, Adam Weishaupt issued an order to a man called Maximilien Robespierre to start the French Revolution by sending a courier from Frankfurt to Paris. En route to Paris, however, the courier was struck by lightning and died. When his body was found by the police, they searched his belongings and found the book he was carrying that detailed the plans for a revolution in France. As a result of this information coming to light, Adam Weishaupt was banished from the country by the Bavarian government, who also outlawed the Illuminati and closed all Masonic lodges. They also issued a warning to all the governments of Europe, telling them to be on guard against this plot. These warnings were unfortunately ignored and France paid the price. The Illuminati had good motivation for choosing France for their first revolution from monarchy to science republic. It was, after all, the French king who had been so influential in shutting down the Jesuits. And even if it were not for him, France was the very embodiment of all that the Enlightenment thinkers had come to hate. They had an absolute monarchy for one, meaning the king had complete and unchallenged authority. Secondly, that monarchy was deeply intertwined with the Catholic Church, who had feudal privileges. The Catholic Church was also the largest landowner in the country and was levying a tax on crops, which they referred to as a tithe. This tax was a terrible financial burden for the poorest people in France, who battled daily with malnutrition. In Essays on the French Revolution, Lord Acton writes, The appalling thing in the French Revolution is not the tumult, but the design. Through all the fire and smoke we perceive the evidence of calculating organisation. The managers remain studiously concealed and masked, but there is no doubt about their presence from the first. Albert Pike confirms in Morals and Dogma that it was Freemasons that aided in bringing about the French Revolution. The Masonic Lunar Society, which was the precursor to the British Royal Society, was intimately connected to the revolutionary movement in France. Freemason and Lunar Society member Benjamin Franklin acted as the shuttle diplomat between the French and English utopian idealists. The son of James Watt was accused of being a French agent by Edmund Burke in the British House of Commons because of his connections. Joseph Priestley openly pledged his wholehearted support to the revolutionary French National Assembly. Fellow Lunar Society member James Keir hosted a dinner to commemorate the fall of the Bastille. Most notably, Erasmus Darwin actively supported the French rebels. And the French Revolution indeed exhibited all of the hallmarks of a Masonic scientific dictatorship. The first thing to notice was that the goddess was quick to make an appearance. After the Legislative Assembly officially rejected God as the object of man's worship and praise, the National Convention paraded a statue of a woman who they called the Goddess of Reason through the streets from the Convention Hall to the Chapel of Notre Dame. There they enthroned her on the high altar. This ritualistic enthronement of human reason embodied in the goddess represented the unification of man's consciousness with the omniscient, which is the ultimate end of evolution and something Freemasons believe they are heading towards naturally. In other words, human reason became the ultimate source of moral precepts and man became God. This whole concept was embodied in this goddess. Also, a Malthusian depopulation campaign also began. Under the direction of Maximilien Robespierre, the revolutionary government began carrying out a massive killing spree that became known as the Reign of Terror. Robespierre said at the time, Terror is nothing else than justice, prompt, secure and inflexible. Robespierre's goal was to eliminate 15 million useless eaters, and while that full number was never realised, the Reign of Terror did claim the lives of around 300,000 Frenchmen. 297,000 of which were members of the lower and middle working classes. The revolutionaries also used the Hegelian principle, setting the rich against the poor in order to create chaos. Out of this chaos, they would step in to offer the solutions. Robespierre at this time headed an effectively dictatorial committee that quickly established pieces of legislation that would authorise or legalise their killing spree. A bit like Muhammad calling down words from Allah that would suddenly allow him to rape captured women. 
For these so-called illuminated ones, the end justified the means and the result of these policy changes was the violent repression of enemies, the forcing of farmers to surrender grain to the government, and the license to kill anyone on the merest hint of suspicion that they were opposed to the revolution. The revolutionary tribunal condemned between 16,000 and 40,000 people to the guillotine. Many more were simply beaten to death by street mobs. Having enthroned the goddess at Notre Dame as the figurehead of their movement, and now being in a position of power, they displayed Plan B tactics and became violent and intimidating towards their enemies. Of course, the revolution also called for the abolition of Christianity. It started with a war on Catholicism, but quickly extended to real Christianity, as people continued to see no distinction between the two. Clergy were deported and condemned to death, Churches were closed and replaced with civic cults, religious monuments were destroyed, public and private worship was outlawed, as was religious education. Priests were told to renounce their vows. This led to the war in the Vendi, which many historians believe was the first modern genocide. A law passed on 21st of October 1793 meant all suspected priests and people who harboured them were liable to death on sight. The Babylonian goddess idol presided over all of this from her throne at Notre Dame. The French Revolution was the first time the world had seen an ideology that dared to challenge the old power structures, and it sent shockwaves around the world. As a result, the ideology of the French Revolution laid the foundations for subsequent ideologies such as socialism, communism and fascism. Early communist leaders such as Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels frequently and extensively referred to the French Revolution, hoping to find important lessons for building and governing communities. At the core of all these communist regimes was the desire to completely suppress and eliminate worship of God, and many of the worst atrocities in human history resulted from such ideologies. Ideologies which we trace through the Enlightenment to Plato, then back into the Kabbalah version of the mysteries, and finally back to their source in Satanic Babylon. Ronald Reagan was on the mark when he openly called the communist Soviet Union evil. The French Revolution, however, was very limited in its success, as it eventually descended into a bloodbath, and many of the conspirators were slaughtered by the very mobs they had created. You could say that the attempt to establish France as the prototype of the New World Order was largely aborted. Yet, the symbol of this aborted scientific dictatorship, the goddess, remained. Long after she was enthroned in the Cathedral of Notre Dame, she was transplanted to the shores of America, and the plan was continued there. Philip Collins writes, Today, statues of this illuminist goddess of reason are found throughout the USA. One stands astride the US Capitol building in Washington, D.C., another is atop the dome of the Capitol building in Austin, Texas. Her statue has been erected in town squares and city parks. But the most fantastic idol of the goddess of reason, the most majestic statue of the pagan lady who bears the torch of light, who illuminates, uplifts and frees mankind, is found in New York's harbour. Towering above the shimmering but polluted waters, she holds in her outreached arm and hand a torch of fire and light. A gift of the Masonic Order, the modern inheritors of the Illuminati heritage, the Statue of Liberty was sculptured by Frédéric Bartholdi, a member of the Masonic Lodge of Alsace-Lorraine in Paris, France. The statue is an esoteric idol of great significance to the secret societies plotting the New World Order. The plans for changing the world didn't end with the French Revolution. They merely changed venues.